it's another beautiful day where I am. I hope it's beautiful where you are too, and the sun is shining. I want to tell you guys today why I think it might be time to think about leaving Canada and looking somewhere else to find your dreams, to live the life you truly want to live. And I want to tell you why I left Canada, actually. It might give you some inspiration, it might give you some pause for thought, or it might actually confirm that you should stay put. But I didn't leave Canada a year ago, two years ago, five years ago. I didn't do it on a trend. I left Canada over 20 years ago. And it's so funny because now I see that feeling and, and fear or doubt that I had in building a life in Toronto. I see it come full circle and come to fruition and now I can see it staring me plainly in the face why it was that I left which is kind of a good feeling because I'm so happy that I listened to my instincts and then I followed the path that that would lead me here and has truly truly given me so much I couldn't imagine what my life would have been like if I had stayed behind but I think it's that feeling that if you ever have it and your gut is telling you and your soul is telling you and everything in your body is screaming like this just doesn't feel right. You need to listen to that feeling because rarely is your instinct or your gut wrong and it's never led me wrong. I've been all over the world. I've been in lots of crazy situations and I always listen to my gut. I always follow that instinct and it never misled me. It never led me wrong. Actually, it's, it's, it's a miracle in some cases because I've been in some, you know, some dodgy situations for a young lady, you know, not knowing anyone in a certain country, not knowing a language, not, not knowing who to trust. So trusting your instinct and trusting yourself ended up being my mantra. So why did I leave Canada? Well, it was over 20 years ago. I had just finished university. I went to McMaster, I got a degree, did everything like everyone says. Finish high school, go to university, then you're going to get a great job. And after I graduated in 2000, I did. I did that. I moved downtown Toronto. I had a great apartment on Young and Bloor uh, in the condos up above the Marriott Hotel. Amazing view of the city from the 36th floor. I had, at that time a handsome boyfriend, successful, older than me, government job. I myself had corporate jobs, great connections, and I was living it up in the city. And I thought, wow, okay, this is what I was waiting for. Wow, I'm moving downtown. Having grown up in the suburbs, you're like, yeah, I want to be a downtown girl. Wow, that lasted about a year. September 11th happened. And just like the pandemic shifted something, at that time, 9-11 shifted something in the air, in the culture, and some innocence was lost. Something was lost. Some kind of joie de vivre was lost. And I remember rethinking everything. Rethinking everything when I saw those planes hit those towers. And I did see the second plane hit that tower live, which still to this day is just haunting. I had actually flown back after my first trip, my first long trip away from home, two or three days before 9-11. And just thinking that, wow, that could have been me, it shocked something in me. It hit something in my core. It shook me in some way. So my life back in Toronto after that, especially living in a tall building, it just didn't feel right. It's like I walked back into someone else's life where the shoes just didn't fit. I stayed, I worked, but something in me was just looking, not just for an escape, but for something different. I thought, okay, here I am, I'm in my early 20s, I've got a great job, I'm making good money, I'm downtown, you know, I've got all this lined up. It, on paper, it looks so good, right? But it didn't feel good. And it was that feeling that was just haunting me every day. And so I thought, you know what? F it. I don't need any of this. I need a suitcase. I need, 
I need a few photos of my family because back then there was no digital. I need the addresses of my friends so I can send them postcards. And I need a ticket. Like, I just need a one-way ticket somewhere. So I was lucky enough to find something, and my journey started from there. I found an internship overseas, and I just went in blindly. But I knew that whatever it was that was awaiting me was where I needed to be. And it's, it's not something you can calculate. So, you know, someone's going to ask me, well, how did you know? Or how, how did you know how much money you would make and how you'd survive and would you do six months from now? And it's like, you don't know that. You don't ever really know that. No matter how cushy you are in your job right now, anything can happen. There could be a huge economic crash in a month or two and 50% of people that you know could lose their jobs or lose their houses or, or whatever it is that they value materialistically. And setting your whole happiness up on something that truly can't be predicted, some formula, it just, it just wasn't for me. And that was at that time a kind of the Canadian way. It was formulaic. And if I had taken time off work, well, of course, the next time I look for a job, well, where were you the last six months? Oh, why did you take a year off? Basically insinuating, well, what's wrong with you? And I needed to escape that, that mentality, that cage that was being created around me. And as a young person who at this point just had entered the workforce and had just finished a degree and was hopeful and bright and full of energy and, and just wanted to learn and connect and see, and that was stifling. It was suffocating. And I wasn't the only one, but I could admit it. I could admit, like, I felt panic inside me. And I thought, this is it. Oh, now I've got my nine to five. And now I've got this guy. And now I've got this apartment. And is this what my life is going to be like now? This is it. This is it. I've arrived. Because if, if this is it, it's, this is not for me. It's not enough. This is not what the world is about. Just making a buck so I can pay my taxes and, and live in some, you know, live in a box high up in the sky to be seen as something to others that really doesn't matter. Does, it, does anyone from 20 years ago even remember me? Probably not. And to be honest, I don't care. I'm happy. I'm happy they don't because that young person had not found her way. And... Does it, does it matter? Does it, is anyone going to remember any mistake you made? I don't think so. I truly don't think so. I think everyone is so worried about what's going on inside themselves that maybe for a, a slight moment, you might grab someone's attention. But at the end of the day, it's, everyone is so internal that we shouldn't fear what anyone thinks. Anyways, I learned that lesson a long time ago, and I stopped caring what people thought about me and the risks I, were, I was taking and... And oh, how it was going to mess up my future. <laughs> oh, God, it's so funny. Because now those same people who are still in Toronto, are still in Canada, I'm, and I'm talking about people that I do know, you know, they look sad. They look depressed because they spent the last 25 years of their life paying mortgages, paying taxes, um, getting leases on a new car every year, and, and, and keeping up with the Joneses. And now the way things are going in Canada, I don't have to tell you. If you're here, you know what I'm talking about. A bag of grocery for the basics costs 50 bucks. You want to feed a family of four and you're going to be pulling out of your savings. You're, you're going to be living paycheck to paycheck just to get everything met, the cost met. It's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating, actually, that two people can have massive incomes and yet still be living in debt it just blows my mind and when i look at those whom i left behind who were sneering at me or doubting me and now they're looking at me and they're saying wow <laughs> maybe she had a point you know maybe we shouldn't have judged her so harshly you know it, it's I'm just so thankful that I left in time, you know, because that would have been my fate. And I'm sure that I would have been miserable because just the thought of it uh, gives me panic. So I left. I left. And I had made a conscious decision not to be a materialistic person, not to change, not to change myself to fit into some role that, that society was expecting of me and not to chase materiality. Not to chase the house, the car, the, the fancy clothes, the purses, the whatever it is, the, the symbols of affluence that truly end up owning you. 
and everything I'm saying, you know, I'm not saying anything new or, or mind boggling. It's, it's just how it fits into my story and how it's turned out that thank, thank God, thank the universe that I was able just to listen to that tiny little voice that said, Mona, this is not for you. You're not going to be happy dressed up like a queen, but <laughs> what are you going to be ruling? You can't even rule yourself. So I didn't need all those symbols. I didn't need all the bells and whistles. I didn't need the performance. I wanted to actually be. And that's why I left. Because at that point, Canada was just a stage where everyone was performing their roles and no one wanted to go off script. And it just wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me. And I packed a suitcase. I literally one suitcase and a backpack. And I left. And I haven't moved back since. I have not moved back to Canada. I've not been back in any permanent way since 2001. And so that's, that's like this huge cycle. When I look back at it now, it's just phenomenal how far I've come. And, and at the same time, I still feel like I'm, I'm there. You know, when I look back and I look back, I look back at Toronto, I look back at my family and friends who are still there and they feel stuck. And I see, wow, you know, I had somehow psychically felt this constraint coming. I, I felt that the grip was only going to get tighter. Even though at the time everything looked rosy. I knew somehow that this lifestyle was only going to grip us tighter and tighter. And then, of course, technology took over and gripped our lives and took over our lives in a completely different way. I mean, people used to go out for drinks after work, believe it or not. People used to be like, hey, what's up? Let's go grab a drink. Let's have a chat. Let's have a laugh. That used to be fun. I don't even know who does that anymore. Now, when I go back to Toronto, if I, if I do, I have to call friends three weeks in advance and say, hey, do you have time to, to have a coffee? Okay, okay. Three weeks, schedule me in. I'll be there. Or do you want to go out? Oh, yeah, next weekend. Uh, yeah, just parking is too expensive downtown. Gas from the burbs is too expensive. Getting into, a, I don't even know, do clubs even exist anymore in Toronto? Do people party? Do people go out? I used to bartend downtown when I was in university, and let me tell you, I was saying back in the day, but it was, it was, those parties were so good, you know, and no one was on the phone in the club because there were no phones to be on, everyone was dancing, and no one cared who was looking, it was, it was amazing, you know, at that time, it was tough to leave that, like I said, it was tough to leave that lifestyle, that candy land, but I knew something else was waiting, and so now when I look back at it, I see that I made a decision not to be so materialistic and not to be on the same path of collecting, collecting goods. <laughs> and it's tough because a lot of people during that time, in the last 20 years, they bought their houses, they got their cars, they got all the status symbols. And I'm looking and I'm saying, damn, I don't own anything. I don't own anything. I really don't. To this day, I don't have a house, a car. I don't have anything substantial in my name. I really don't. But somehow, and it's not magic, it's just karma, I think. It's when you have faith. It's when you have faith that things are going to work out and that you work hard and you hustle and you, you follow your instincts, you follow your dreams, you follow your nose, you go where life is leading you. Because there's purpose there. There's purpose that is worthy more than a dollar. It's more about <laughs> why did we come here? We, to, to be better, to learn, to grow, just to be more than just a machine, you know, punching numbers in and paying taxes every day. So that choice to not be materialistic set me free a long time ago. And it wasn't conscious. I was not, I was not telling myself, hey, don't be materialistic. No, it was just a matter of like life or death. It was, do you want to live this lifestyle and be buried in things but be miserable? Or do you want to be free? Do you want to be free? And it's not freedom. I, I love freedom. I, I don't think there's anything I love more in my life than freedom. It is that freedom that has given me the ability to, to have the life I have to enjoy and experience and, and encounter with such depth and 
to feel beauty, <laughs> to feel the moment in such a way, un just completely unattached and unhindered. It's, it's such an incredible feeling when you truly are free, when you truly are free in your soul. And I think that that is our natural state. And the way the world is set up, yeah, it's there to entrap you. There's entrapment everywhere, you know? And it's something we have to learn to avoid. So I got free. And then I asked myself, well, if I'm not collecting material things, what am I collecting? And now when I look back and I see, okay, what do I have? What do I have? What's in this suitcase? What have I collected? And I look back and I realize that I have collected amazing memories, incredible friendships, moments that cannot be repeated and moments that are so hard to explain, but they're, they're things that would never would have happened to me if I wasn't at the right place at the right time. And that only instinct can lead you there. Those synchronicities come when you know that you are following your heart and you're on your path. Synchronicities happen as a sign to tell you, hey, you're going the right way. Keep going, keep pushing, keep hustling. We've all had those signs. Whether you want to recognize them or not, it's okay. But you can call them coincidences, but I don't. I don't. I see them for what they are in my life. And I've always been pushed onward by the slightest flutter of a butterfly, let's say. Tiny, tiny little messages embedded in my universe that tell me, you know what? You're on the right path. Keep going. So having become a collector of memories and amazing friendships, I have, I have so many great friends. And I don't mean like, oh, I know <laughs> YouTube or, or Facebook friends. I'm talking like I got real friends who will help me if times are tough, will embrace me if I need a good cry and are there to share a beer with me wherever the hell I want to go. One of my best friends is in Poland. Another one of my best friends is in, is in Holland. Two of my other great friends are in Greece. I've got friends literally spread out all, all over the world. Another great friend in Boston. And when I think about that, I'm thinking, wow, this world is so small. And I've been able to touch so many places. It feels like it's mine. It feels like I've been here. I actually came into my life and I've seen this earth and the gift that the universe has given us. I'm, I'm seeing the miracle that, that this world is. In the meantime, I've been to over 60 countries. And I'm not flexing. It's just a collect collection of, of memories that if you move and if you... If you move in the direction, you groove in the direction that you need to go, it just, they just accumulate. I speak seven languages, not perfectly by any, by any means, but I can communicate in seven different languages with people that if I didn't speak their language, I would never get to know. And I've met so many interesting people who've had amazing advice for me and guidance and and just moments where you walk into a bar and people do not expect you to speak that language. And they're like, hey, this girl, let's buy her a beer. And just starting a conversation with randoms ends up becoming a great night of just exchanging experiences. That happens to me all the time. Now, maybe it's just because I love to talk. <laughs> and I'm never on my phone, except right now. I don't pull out my phone. I just don't pull out my phone. Why? It's not an extension of me. The experience is here. The experience is here. You know, not through some window. Not through some other dimension that you're trying to capture. And it's never as good, right? Like, I'm sure that if you were sitting here with me, we'd have a really good time chatting face-to-face. -face. That's, that's what I prefer. I don't have, I've never had any social media, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. Because people would ask me, hey, what's your Facebook? I'd be like, yo, I got a face. It's right here. You know, you want to talk to me, call me. You want to talk, you want to see me, call me. Let's go somewhere. That element is gone. I don't see people hanging out anymore. It's like they're scared. Do, do you pick up the phone when it rings? I don't know many people who pick up the phone anymore when it rings. 
And that's why I'm so thankful that I did what I did when I did, because the world that was then was open. It, it's, it's hard and arms were open. And now, even though we're more connected, I feel like everyone is closed, you know, and, and to reach you, I have to come through here. I have to come through your screen. You know, would you talk to me on the street? I don't know. Would you, would you let me buy you a coffee to have a chat? I don't know. Would you think I was weird if I was like, hey, come over to our table. You're sitting by yourself. Drink with us. That's me. I don't know. And that's why I decided to, to share with you guys because I want you to be rich. I want you to be rich in a way that does not have a number on it. That doesn't have a societal value on it that can be exchanged. I want you to be rich in a way that you have people who care about you, who want to talk to you, who enjoy your laughter, your smile. I want you to see the world in all the places that you could possibly be. Places that make your eyes smile, that fill your soul. Just a simple view, wordless. That just fills you in a way and makes you feel like, yeah, I belong here. This is my world. This is my life. You know, the universe made this for me. That feeling is so filling and fulfilling. You won't need stuff. You will drop all of your materialistic cravings to fill yourself with something much, much more satisfying. And I want you to be rich in that way. You don't have to do anything perfectly. You don't have to go and visit a thousand places. You don't need to speak lots of languages. You need to speak with your heart, actually. And, you know, to speak with your heart, you have to show up. That's the thing. And I'm showing up. I think I'm showing up. You know, I'm showing up for you because I really don't need anything else out of this except to share what life has given me. Because like I said, this is not just mine. It's yours. And I want you to feel rich. I want you to feel the sunshine on your face. Even if it is 10 degrees below and it's freezing, I want you to put your jacket on and sit outside and enjoy the sun and be like, yeah, this is shining for me. Because it is. Collect memories. Collect friendships. Collect moments. Save them in your heart. Save them in your soul. Disconnect from all the other crap that is just there to confuse you. And waste your time. Just don't waste your time. Cheers, guys. Until the next one.